Whether you're using Microsoft Excel for your data entry, or you're entering data directly into IBM SPSS statistics, your data need to be organized and structured in a specific way. If you will be collecting data in Excel, and then later importing it into SPSS for analysis, this information is for you. We are going to dive deeper into how to structure your numbers into rectangular data. This data set is ready for analysis. Notice the structure of the data. The numbers are organized into rows and columns. This is called rectangular data. If you plan to use SPSS, this is how you want your data to look. Now I'll quickly add three important caveats about this data. Number one, the researcher gave me permission to use her data set. Number two, this is only a portion of the full data set. The actual project was much larger. And C, the data are de-identified for confidentiality so that you, the viewer, have no way of knowing the identity of any of the participants. The same will be true of all of the other data sets that I will show you. This wise researcher used a validated survey for her project. The validated scale is called the Spain, which is the scale of positive and negative experience. It is a scale used in the study of emotional intelligence created by Ed Diener and Robert Biswas Diener. Always use validated scales instead of survey questions that you make up yourself. First, validated scales like this are much better measures of your construct. When you publish, we can actually know what your findings mean in relationship to other research by others who used the same scale. And you are more likely to find statistically significant differences because you have less measurement error. And also, it's easier to use a validated scale that someone else already created. This is one of the few times in research that the easier way is also the better way. Don't make up your own survey items. These are the individual Spain items. These items have been used to calculate three subscales. Each variable has a label. So we could tell what each variable is, even if we came back to this data set years later. This is what you want. Let's dive deeper into what you need to know to get there. In order to use data in IBM SPSS statistics, it is important that your data be in rectangular format. Here's what that means when you look at your Excel spreadsheet. Each row is a case or a participant. Each participant has an anonymous identifier and all of the data in any given row belong to the same person. Each column is a variable. Every survey item, gender code, income category, grouping variable, scale score, subscale score, pretest, post-test, and so forth, all goes in its own column. And each person's individual item response, specific gender, their income, their group, their scale score, subscale score, pretest, or post-test, goes along that person's row. Variable names go along the top row. SPSS will read variable names from the top row of data, but you can only have one top row. If the first two rows have names in them, or if the variable names are on the second row, the import will not work. Each participant should have a unique identifier or ID number. If you have a medical records number for participants, you could use that here. Otherwise, as in this case, it can just be a random number. If you do not have an identifier, here's how to add one. First, insert a new column. Title your new column ID, and then type 1, 2, 3. Select those data and double click on the handle to copy the numbers down the column.
That is how to add the identifier in Excel. But if you are working in SPSS, you can still easily add a random ID number. Go to Transform Compute Variable. We will call our new target identity variable ID. For numeric expression, begin by clicking on the function group All. You want this first function, case number. Drag that into the numeric expression formula window. OK. The new variable is created at the bottom of the variables list, but we can drag it to the top. Click over to Data View, and we see our new identifier variable. But let's say that you wanted your identifier to have three digits. Go to Transform Compute Variable. Make the numeric expression plus 100. Change the existing variable. In Variable View, we can set the decimals to zero. Label this a random ID number. It is already set to nominal. In Data View, we see our new case numbers. Each variable does one job. If your random ID number was assigned so that odd numbers identify the experimental group and even numbers identify the control group, then you need a new variable. You need a variable called group, coded as 1 equals experimental group and 2 equals control group. Your identification variable does one job. It identifies. It does not also indicate group belonging. You will need a second variable to do that second job. Each data point does one job. If patients could have received any one of three different drugs, then for the variable drug, you could code one, two, or three for whatever type of drug that patient received. However, if the patient could have received drug one only, or could have received drugs one and three, or could have received all three, do not make your drug variable do more than one job. You cannot put one and three in the same variable. Instead, you would need three variables, drug one, drug two, drug three, one for each type of drug. Each patient would then be coded as to whether they received drug one, where one equals yes and zero equals no. If they received both, then they get a one for both drugs. Paired samples must be paired. If you have repeated measures data, such as the pretest and the post-test, both the pretest score and the post-test score must go on the same row for each participant. And the post-test must be matched to the pretest score. You should never include data in a row unless you are certain that that data comes from that individual. Now, this will require some kind of coding scheme on the pre and post tests so that you will know whose responses are whose. You cannot just hand out pretests and post tests willy nilly with no way of knowing whose post test goes with whose pretest. No missing data. When your data are ready to analyze, you should have no missing data. Everybody should answer every question. Now, in practicality, this rarely happens, so you need a plan for how to handle missing data. For now, here are two rules for missing data. For missing categorical data, enter as much as you can. If you assigned a 1 to those who received a drug, then use the recode into same variable function in SPSS to replace the system missing data with zeros. Second, for missing numeric data, 
just leave the cell blank in Excel. Do not add a period or an NA or something else, just leave it blank. And be sure that you know why the data are missing. Did the item simply not apply to that person? Did they refuse to answer? Did you forget to include an item? This is the time to consult your statistician for advice about imputing missing data. You can organize your data any way that you want, when it's just you. But if you plan to use SPSS, your data must be in rectangular format. Knowing how to use rectangular format structure from the beginning can save you lots of time and effort later on. Thank <laughs> you.